Okay, lesson 26 is transformations. What's our objective class? Get ready. Transformation. Tra Geometry. So for those of you that are very spatially oriented or, or visually with pictures and graphics, this one will be your lesson. There's not very many numbers in it. All right, so congruence transformations are reflections, rotations, and translations. A lot of you had, have had this for several years. Some of you have never had it before. So we're going to go over what all the words mean. This is a reflection. This triangle was reflected over the dotted line. This is the axis of symmetry or line of symmetry. So it's a reflection. We also call it a flip. This triangle was slid over, it slid to the right and it slid up. A slide is called a translation. And then this triangle was rotated, okay? Or we also call it, uh, we also called it turned, okay? A rotation. So we're gonna go over each of those. A flip is a reflection. What is a flip? Get ready. Reflection. Reflection. A slide is a translation. What is it? Get ready. Translation. 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 You know how I remember this? The sl is translation. Translation. The sl is translation. Turn is a rotation. What is a turn? Get ready. Rotation. Rotation. Good. So we're going to try some on the graph. So in course two, you probably saw those, but not much on the graph. So we're going to spend a little more time on the graphs today. All right, so take a look at this triangle. We're going to draw the image after a reflection over the y-axis. So I'm going to trace this triangle. A, B, C. We're supposed to reflect it over the y-axis. So the first step is draw a dotted line on your axis of reflection. So our case is the y-axis. That will help you visually go, okay, I'm not reflecting it down here. I'm reflecting it over my axis. But where does it go? Does it go on the axis? Does it go over a certain amount? But how far? Here's how you know. Count how far away from the axis it is. So one, two, three units. One, two, three units. So the new point B goes here. Because it's a new point, we give it a special mark. We put a tick there. We say B prime. What do we say? Get ready? B prime. B prime. Very good. So A is the same thing. One, two, three units away. Here's A prime. And then C prime I already know when I reflect, it flips. So I know C prime is two units away, right there. And I can draw my new triangle and get rid of all my swoops that make my messy drawing look messier. And there's my image. The first one, the original is called the pre-image. The new one is called the image. What is the new one called? Get ready? Image. Image. So we're also going to talk about translation. A translation, remember, is a slide. So look at the pre-image. All right, MJL, sorry, MJKL. Look at that, it just moved over here. Is it the same size and shape? Yeah, so the size and change, it changed location. Let's pick point J and find out how did it turn into J prime? What, did, what happened to it? Well, it definitely moved to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six units over. And it moved down one, two units over. So we can abbreviate and say it went to the right six and down two. You can also say right six units down two units. Okay? Two ways to say that's the type of translation it underwent. Jasmine? Could you say down two units, right six units? No, always go x, x direction first, then y direction. Okay? Good question. All right, rotation. Rotations are when you turn it. You can turn it anywhere, any direction, any amount of degrees. So we're going to start simple. We're going to turn our triangle. Let's see if it's the same size. We're going to turn our triangle clockwise about B. Remember, clockwise is the direction of the clock this way. B is our pivot point, so put your finger here. And there's our 90 degree rotation. How do you know it's 90? Well, pick a spot, like maybe this vertical one. And think, watch it go 90 degrees. It just went 90 degrees. So the new one goes here and here. So B stayed there, so the B prime is in the same spot. C went up here to C prime. A went down there to A prime. So my new triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime, is right here. So 90 degrees clockwise. Colin. 
I definitely could if it said counterclockwise. And then look what I would get. I could do it again, too. Okay. All right. Oh, we're going to take it up a notch. We're going to go like this. So some of you thought, oh, I've already, I already got, I learned that in course two. But this will be something new. We're going to now rotate it about a different point. We're going to rotate it about the origin. Here's the origin. What does that mean, rotate it about the origin? That means I can shrink it down so I can fit it in my transparency. I'm going to line it up with my origin and my y-axis. That's how I'm going to keep track of my perfectly 90 degree turn. I'm going to trace the triangle, label it. Now, if, if the origin is my pivot point, watch this line right here go 90 degrees. Okay. That's the new location. That's my new image. C prime is here. A prime is here, B prime is here. Alright? So crazy, it would be kind of hard visually to, to without spinning this to find it. But there is a way without tracing the paper. You can use like a thin piece of paper like line paper and trace it and then move it, but there's another way. Some of you might see it. Let me see. Here's point B. The coordinate is negative three, two. What's the new B prime? Two. Hmm. What about A prime and A? A is negative 3, 5. A prime is 5, 3. What are we seeing? Samantha? The X and Y change spots. They, cha they kind of flip, flip locations. X becomes Y, Y becomes X. And it has to be positive because we're in the first quadrant. Is it always that way? No. Negative 5, comma, 2. This is going to be 2, comma, 5. Every time it works. All right? And then to follow up even one more, if I rotate it again, you're going to see another XY exchange. If I rotate it again, you're going to see another XY exchange. Cool. So you can rotate about a different point, the origin. So we'll be able to practice that. All right. So here's a cool one. They started with a pre-image, triangle A, B, C, and then there's a new image, A prime, B prime, C prime. The question is, how did it get there? What transformations caused it to get there? So we do a little bit of problem solving here. I'm going to reset this. I have my sticky marker that's really hard to erase today. Okay? Look at this. It's definitely changed. It's changed orientation. It's somehow is it rotated? Is it flipped? What did it do? Who sees one that we can? Who sees a movement we can do to help it get there? Even um, reflection. Reflection. Cool. Tell me where to reflect it. CB or AB? AB. AB. So we're gonna go. Okay. I like it so far. Reflection over segment AB. Okay. Who's got another one? Joseph. Rotation, great. About what point and what direction? Uh, All right, I like that. So B, and we're going to go left how far? Uh, 90, degrees. 90 degrees. I like it. Okay. Rotation counterclockwise, 90 degrees, about B. Okay. Now what? Jasmine? Um, Need to go over to the right. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And I'll be one. Awesome. And we'll call this translation. All right. So we've got reflection, rotation, and a translation. And there's a really specific instructions step by step, each detail to know how that triangle, the pre-image, got to A prime, B prime, C prime, B image. Any questions on that? I can tell by the looks on your faces, somebody like, oh, this is new stuff. It's cool. Annika. What could this be used for? 
good question. I would say this type of architects for symmetry when they're designing buildings, if they want things symmetrical or balanced with proportions and uh, what's it called? Orientation. Okay, so maybe to understand uh, who else engineers would use this in designs, making sure like a big structure would have symmetry in it to have balancing for weight. So. All right, if you get a congruence transformation, meaning once you've done a change, the new image is the exact same as the starting image, like the shape and size are the same, it's called an isometry. What is it called, get ready? Isometry. Isometry, so this is an isometry of this. Size and shape stayed the same. They're congruent images. Um, if you took an image and you made it bigger, we call it a dilation. What do we call it when it gets bigger? Get ready. Dilation. Dilation. The proportions remain the same. Remember when we talked about childbirth and the dilation had to get bigger? Oh. Maybe we didn't talk about childbirth oh. in this class. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. So we're like, no, don't talk about it. Mrs. No. And then we also maybe said in contraction it has to shrink down. That's when the mother also has to push the <laughs> contraction. <laughs> has to get smaller. <laughs> so from here to here, you have to contract. <laughs> 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 oh, I learned that today. <laughs> 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 you just videoed that Okay, that is on the video. Okay, good. Oh, that is on the video, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna get freaking demonetized on YouTube for this. <laughs> Everyone will love it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you have a rectangle that undergoes a dilation, it gets bigger. Everything is proportional still. And if you were to connect points, you would have a, it's got a name, uh, I forgot it, a point of something. A point of something. Horizon. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. What it does, though, is it creates proportionate sides and it creates parallel lines. So AD is parallel to A prime, D prime. This is parallel, 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 parallel. And they are similar. Okay? So. Let's look at a little bit of numbers. The pre-image has dimensions one and two, but the new image has dimensions four and two. So my question is, how much bigger is this? What would I times two by to get the four? Think. Get ready. Two. 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 Same thing over here. I times that by two to get two. All right. So we call that a scale factor. The scale factor is two. What is our scale factor? Get ready. Two. two. What about the perimeter? Perimeter of this guy is two plus one plus two plus one. Remember, all the way around the outside, two plus one plus two plus one. I like to do it in pairs. There's four, there's two, so six centimeters. Perimeter of this one is four plus two plus four plus two. Do it in pairs, eight and four makes 12. Compare the perimeter. How much bigger is this perimeter compared to this perimeter? How many times bigger? Not how many, like if I added or subtracted, but how many times bigger, Emma? That's it. That's not what I'm, I'm not. It's center of dilation. Center of dilation, thank you. I think it's point of dilation, center of dilation. Okay, thank you. What would it times by, Hannah? What would I times by to get my new perimeter? I would times by two. So this one is two times bigger. I'm going to say the perimeter is two times bigger. What about area? I'm going to change colors. Area. Okay. The area of this original one is two times one, length times width, or two centimeters squared. The new area, prime, is going to be four times two, or eight centimeters squared. So this is different. Okay, really listen. I, my students have struggled a little bit on this concept. How many times bigger is this area compared to this area? Not by adding or subtracting, but how many times, what would I times this by to get this area? Oh. All right, Connor. Four. Four, good. So area is four times bigger. Notice, our scale factor was two, perimeter was two times bigger, but our area was four times bigger. We're going to have another lesson later that's going to talk about um, your scale factor squared for area, cubed for volume. We'll get to that later. But notice, see the square? Couldn't I fit, if I clean this up again, could I fit four of these in here? See how this is four times the area is this one? 
That's what they're looking for. So on your practice set, when it says, um, how many times bigger is the area? They don't want to know what the area is. They want to know how many of these you can fit in here. How many times bigger is this? It's four times bigger. Okay, any questions? All right, we talked about that, we talked about that. And we are here. Page 173 and 4, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Do a little slash there. Read the directions before you begin. 